Hi everyone, my name is Martin. I'm a fourth year medical student uh, and today we're going to talk a little bit about femoral neck fractures. So this is going to be a multi-part video series. Um, in terms of femoral neck fractures, it's most likely going to consist of two videos. One kind of going through an overview, an anatomy, uh, as well as some of the clinical presentation and radiographic evaluation for or that's needed for femoral neck fractures. And the second video is going to detail the classification of femoral neck fractures and basically how do we treat it, more of like an algorithmic type approach to treatment. So let's start. So let's go through an overview. Femoral neck fractures are increasingly common in the aging population. They're going to be more prevalent in women than in men. And when you look in terms of race, they're going to be more prevalent in Caucasian as opposed to African American. In terms of mechanism of action, a bit in terms of how they have the fracture or how the fracture occurs, we're going to think of two things. We're going to think of low energy type mechanisms and we're going to think of high energy. So low energy is basically going to sound what it uh, seems what it's going to sound like. Low energy is going to mean fall from a standing height and if you see this, this is mainly going to be in the elderly population. High energy is going to be things like falling from a significant height or a motor vehicle accident. And this, if it happens in um, young patients, if young patients have a hip fracture or femoral neck fracture, it's more likely to be from a high energy. But this also is not limited to young. It also can occur in the elderly. One thing I want to mention here with this mechanism is that associated with uh, femoral neck fractures, you can have femoral shaft fractures. This can occur about 6 to 9% of the time. And if you do have that, you want to make sure you're treating the femoral neck fracture first. So what's the prognosis on femoral neck fractures? Um, in terms of the elderly, it's, it's not that great. Um, there's about a 25 the 30% mortality at the first year, post, or within the first year, post femoral neck fracture. Um, one of the biggest uh, factors to assess this mortality is something known as pre-injury uh, mobility. So if they had better pre-injury mobility, they're uh, less likely to have uh, this mortality um, as opposed to someone that has a very little pre-injury mobility. And also it's, um, it's worthwhile saying that patients with chronic renal failure actually can have rates of mortality upwards to 45% mortality at one year. So now let's go to anatomy. We'll draw the femur here. This being right here, a lesser troke. This being here, a greater troke. Uh, and then here being our femoral head, femoral neck. This shaft to neck angle is about 130, some say 127 degrees. Um, femoral aneversion, so we'll put neck shaft angle. Femoral aneversion is around 10 degrees. Just a reminder for everyone, we said that normal neck shaft angle is about 130 or 127 degrees. We normally call a neck shaft angle that is less than 120 to be something known as coxa vera, 
So it means that the, um, the shaft is in varus. Or if we have something greater than 135 here, we have coxa valga, which basically means that it's going to be more into valgus. This is going to come in uh, handy when we talk about the cl classification, specifically the garden classification. Um, when we talk about blood supply, blood supply, we're going to we're going to break it down into two components, and we'll start this on the next page. The first component is going to be from birth to our adult years. This is a little simplified, but we'll go with it. And the next is going to be from your adult years forward. From birth to your adult years, you're going to have basically blood flow from three main sources. Your medial femoral circumflex, your lateral fem circumflex, and then a branch of your obturator artery. As you progress to an adult 18 years and beyond, it's mainly going to be from your medial femoral circumflex. Specifically, it's going to be a branch known as your lateral physial artery. So let's talk about presentation. How are these patients going to present when they come into the ED? Well, it's going to depend on whether it's displaced or non-displaced. For non-displaced, or we can call it um, basically a stress or impacted fracture, they may lack deformity. They may only be, uh, be complaining of things like groin pain or groin pain on palpation or pain with axial compression. In displaced, sorry about that. In displaced fractures, we're going to see the classic deformity of a shortened limb with some external rotation. These patients are going to be non-ambulatory. Unlike the non-displaced or the impacted or stress fractured uh, group, which might be ambulatory. So here's just a, just a hint: is even that the patient isn't coming in complaining of or sh showing a presentation of a shortened limb with external rotation, they still p could be having a hip fracture or a uh, femoral neck fracture. So let's say now a patient comes in complaining of groin pain, non-ambulatory, the patient's limb is shortened and it's externally rota rotated, what do we do next? Well, we want to get a radiographic eval. First and foremost, we want to get some type of plane films, specifically the views we're looking for. We want an AP pelvis. We also want an AP of the proximal femur, in addition to a cross table lateral. It's important to note here contra indicated is going to be a frog lateral. So again, do not get a frog lateral. You want an AP pelvis in addition to an AP proximal femur and a cross table lateral. CT scans are helpful they're going to be helpful, especially in the presentation of a trauma patient. They can help discern um, displacement. An MRI right now is a modality of choice to help 
delineate occult fractures and non-displaced fractures. Okay, so I hope, hope that was helpful. This is going to be our first part on femoral neck fractures. Again, talking about a little bit of the overview, the clinical presentation, and how do we basically work them up in terms of radiographic evaluation. The next series is going to talk about classification, um, going through both the anatomic, Powell's, garden classifications, and then also talking about treatment, basically non-op and op treatment. I hope you found them helpful. Thank you.